Welcome to the sixth installment of this video series on fields. Today uh, we're going to talk about potential energy. Um, and in this particular video, it's quite a detailed video, but we're going to go through graphs of uniform and point fields. The idea of a potential well uh, and how it relates to orbital motion and compare a uniform and monopole field in terms of potential energy for uh, a gravitational example. Okay, uh, let's get started now. And we're going to look at gravitational uniform field example. And we're going to spe specifically look at a force versus and a uh, potential energy graph. Now, let's have a look at Newton sitting here under his apple tree. And we're going to twist gravity so that it's acting towards the left. Uh, as you can see, gravity is a bit strange in this example. But it helps when we draw uh, for a uniform. Uh, how to draw our force diagram and work diagram and potential energy diagram. As you can see, we know the force at any point in space is going to be the same on that apple, and it's going to equal uh, mass times the gravitational field strength. So we can draw the graph of force as being a uniform graph. Now, we know the work, if we were to be on the surface and move slightly upwards, would be force uh, mg times how high it goes, okay? And if we look at this graph here of force and height versus height, it's actually the area under the graph. So the work is going to be the area under the graph. So we can, uh, the area is going to match that next point there. Uh, as we get to a larger h, the work gets bigger and bigger. And so that point on that work graph gets higher and higher up that graph. Now, if we go to, say, the seventh point there, we get a high, even higher work. And we go all, all the way to the top, the mg times h will be even higher. So work is a function of height. And so we actually get a linear graph there. So for the force versus h, we get a constant graph. And the work versus h, we get a linear graph there, where work is proportional to h. Uh, and mg is actually just a constant. So going from mg, sorry, force to work or potential energy, we actually just integrate that graph. If we understand calculus, um, it's actually the area under the graph or the integral of the force uh, over the distance. Now, going back the other way, interestingly, the work or potential energy graph, the slope of that graph will actually equal the force. So if work is equal to mgh, the slope of the graph is actually just mg. OK, let's go to a gravitational point field uh, scenario for force versus potential energy. This is a little bit more complex. OK, um, and so what we have is a graph of force and work. And we know from previous videos that the force decreases by 1 on r squared. So on a kilo, we, we might have at the surface of the Earth 9.8 newtons of force. And then double that distance there, uh, we'd have 2.5 newtons on a kilo uh, there. So we get that 1 on r squared relationship, which kind of looks like that. And the force really drops off quite quickly uh, with radius or distance. Uh, as said there, force is proportional to 1 on r squared. Now what we're going to do is we're going to draw little rectangles here and that, that tells us what the force incrementally is over a little distance of r. And if we were to add all those rectangles there consecutively, we get uh, the increase in the work or the potential energy from uh, one point to the next. So as you can see, the potential energy increases, but by a lesser and lesser amount. Uh, that's because the force gets lesser and lesser for each increment of radius there. Now, how we actually define the work graph or the potential energy graph uh, is such that the potential energy is zero at infinity. Okay. Now, the work equals the potential energy. And similar to uh, the previous example, it's pr 
proportional to minus 1 on R there. And this is to do with the calculus or adding those areas under the curve there, um, which we can do with calculus, which is a bit beyond the course here. Uh, so the work is the integral of the force times dr there. Now going from the work uh, example there, we can actually find the force in the reverse scenario, uh, which is equal to the slope of the, the potential energy graph will give you the force. Now, uh, here's the mathematical uh, derivation of this in terms of calculus. We have the force is gmm on r squared. We integrate that with respect to r. GMM are actually constants in this particular scenario, uh, and we actually get minus 1 and R plus C, okay? So if we set C to be 0, we actually get the uh, the work to be minus GMM on R, which points towards force, sorry, potential energy being proportional to minus 1 and R. And if we set potential energy to be zero uh, infinitely far away from uh, our Earth, we get that graph there we, where we have everywhere we have negative uh, potential energy. And the closer in, uh, we get a more negative, And the further out, we get a more positive or bigger potential energy as we get further out. So it's, it's a little bit confusing or a little bit tricky, but it's important to understand that concept. Okay, using this actual graph, we can lead to our potential energy vis visualization. Uh, and this is the idea of a potential well. Okay, so we've set the potential energy, which is fairly arbitrary, to be zero at infinity. And if we were to try and escape the gravity of Earth, we'd have to kind of climb out of that potential well. So the slope represents the force, and, a, and a, at a steeper force, it's harder to escape that gravity. Uh, but as we get further out, the slope gets lesser, so the force is less to overcome that gravity. Um, and at infinity, uh, we've kind of escaped that gravity, or the force of gravity there. Okay, so as as mentioned here again, it's a greater force to overcome gravity closer into the Earth. Uh, but if we do that and apply work, we get further and further out from that potential well. Uh, and it's less and less force to overcome gravity the further out you are. Having said that, at all points along the, along the curve, the further out you're increasing your potential energy. It's becoming more positive with radius. Okay, let's go through a 3D potential well. And here is my backyard with some strange background music. Um, it's my garage, I mean. Uh, and look there, that, that there in the middle is a tennis ball which represents the Earth. Uh, this tool is GeoGebra Augmented Reality. It's fantastic. It looks pretty cool too. Uh, and what we can actually do is we can insert this visualization for a potential well, uh, which you'll see in a second. And it can represent the potential at every point in space close to the Earth. So closer in, the potential is less, and further out it gets towards zero, but it's higher up, so the potential is higher. Uh, and this can be used to thought of, think of how gravity works. As we get closer in, objects will fall towards the Earth and fall at a greater rate. So the force due to gravity is greater. It also explains escape velocity, uh, which is the velocity required to get you from a point in that well to escape gravity, which would mean getting infinitely far away in terms of its potential. So trying to escape that curve with enough speed. Okay, now does anyone remember this particular charity tool here? Uh, it's a great way of explaining planetary, uh, circular or elliptical motion, even uh, the electron orbiting an atom. Uh, as you get closer in, with no friction, uh, we get a faster and faster speed. The gravitational force is greater, the slope's greater. Uh, and so you actually get faster speeds the closer in there. Uh, which explains the planet's motion around the sun. Now this idea or shape also is a great analogy for general relativity and the curvature of space-time. 
but we won't go into it uh, in too much detail here. Definitely worth you investigating yourselves further. Okay, now let's look at electrostatic point fields. So the force and potential energy graph for these. Okay, for a negative charge, given that there's forces of attraction for a positive and negative, uh, the potential, it looks like a potential well as per gravity. But for when there is repulsion, uh, we actually get a volcano type looking thing here. Now for the negative charge in the middle, uh, increasing potential energy the further we get away. Whereas we actually get decreasing potential energy for a for repulsion, okay, because it wants to be pushed out uh, and it requires work to get two positive charges closer and closer together. So the work's positive when you're drawing them together. P is increasing, going back to the negative one, P is increasing with radius, uh, whereas for positive, positive in repulsion, uh, P increases as it approaches. So getting closer and closer together, you increase the potential energy. Uh, and getting further and further apart for light charges uh, will mean uh, a negative, sorry, decreasing potential energy. Okay, let's go through in a uniform versus monopole example. So what is the change in the potential energy on a two kilo object from the Earth's surface to one kilometers high? So the idea around this example is to compare and hopefully get the same answer for both uniform and monopole. Now, with uniform, we assume the potential energy will be zero at the surface of the Earth. Um, and if, Sorry, for uniform we do that, and monopole is zero at infinity. Now, the potential energy at the surface is mgh, and h is just zero, so our potential energy is zero there. Our mass is two kilos. Uh, G is going to be 9.81 or 9.8 newtons per kilo. So at a hundred, sorry, a thousand meters, which is one kilometer, our P potential energy at one kilometer is going to be two times 9.8 times a thousand, and we get 19,600 joules there. Okay. Now the change in potential energy is just going to be the potential energy at one kilometer minus the potential energy uh, at the surface of the Earth. And it's just going to be our answer of 19,600 19, joules. So there's an increase of potential energy as we go from zero to a kilometer up. Okay. Now let's do this exact same example with a monopole. So explaining it using uh, the formulas for uh, uh, point forces or point potential energy. Now the gravitational constant is there. The mass of the Earth is 5.972 times 10 to the 24. The little mass is two kilos. The radius of the Earth is 6,371 kilometers or 6.3 roughly million meters. And from previous equations, we've got the potential energy of the surface being minus gm little m on r. Okay, so putting all that in the calculator, uh, we get a negative number, which is totally different, but for the surface of the Earth, we get minus 1250445487 joules. So negative that, that's roughly minus 125 million joules. Okay. Now, the P at one kilometer, we just use the different radius of 6372 thousand uh, meters and we get a potential energy of minus one two five zero two five eight six three joules now that looks like a smaller number but in actual fact it's a more positive number so it's a greater number than at the surface um, if we think about that potential well p at one kilometer is higher up in that well Okay, now the change in P is going to be the P at one kilometer minus P at the surface, uh, a negative number which is more positive, minus minus which adds a negative number which is more negative, uh, will give us a positive change in potential energy which is 19624 joules. Now looking at that, we get pretty much the same answer within error of uh, the potential energy. So 
Importantly, the change in potential energy, not its absolute value, is what it's important. Uh, the absolute value is really just a reference point that we use. Okay. In this final bit, let's look at uh, the formula summary for both gravitational versus electrostatic. Uh, for uniform, we set the potential energy at the surface generally. Uh, we can set any reference point we wish, but generally it's at the surface of a planet or the Earth for most examples. Uh, for electrostatics, we're going to get this to this in a different video, but we set it where the voltage is zero or where there's neut neutrality. Okay, um, the potential energy in gravity is just mass times gravitational field strength times height. The potential energy for electrostatics is charge times electric field strength times the separation. Um, now we often refer to the change in potential energy as opposed to the absolute magnitude of potential energy. Now for monopole uh, fields, we often, we all, pretty much always say the potential energy is zero at infinity or infinitely far away. The potential energy in terms of gravity, the formula for that is gm little m on r, uh, and that's negative. Uh, and for electrostatics, it's minus kq, q on r there. Um, and that's for opposite charges, okay, where there's attraction force, and that's a negative potential. Well, when we have a positive, we have a volcano type shape, uh, sorry, when there's like charges, so we have KQQ on R. Um, so when there's like charges or a repulsive force there, and it looks like a volcano there in terms of the shape of that potential graph there. Okay, uh, thank you for watching this detailed video on potential energy. Um, it was a long one, but I'm hope you, hoping you got a lot out of it. Uh, and definitely subscribe to these videos, it's really appreciated. Uh, and feel free to definitely leave some comments below. Cool, thank you for watching.